Hi guys, Patty here from CCM Patsy's Boutique. Um, I'm just going to do a quick video. Um, it's going to recap what I did in my Friday live. If you happen to catch my live or watch it on replay, you know, things did not go as I expected or planned. Um, one of the reasons was I went a lot earlier on my live than I originally intended or told people I would. Um, so I'm to my peeps, I'm really sorry I went earlier. It's just been one of those weeks, um, very emotionally and mentally exhausting. Um, you may know um, we lost a very dear family member. My husband's stepmother passed away this week, so we've been dealing with a lot. Um, I wasn't gonna actually do my live, but it was my second live and I really wanted to keep the momentum going. I didn't want to get out of the swing of it and lose my confidence. So I decided to, uh, muddle through. And then of course, you know, um, every person who's ever gone live can totally relate to this. My internet, internet decided to act all wonky. So, um, uh, my connection got lost a couple of times. So it was, and then, uh. The picture, the audio, and the picture was actually at times very shaky and unstable. So I figured I'd hop on, do a recorded video recapping what we did in the live. Um, and hopefully this will turn out better. And I'll put this on my YouTube channel. Um, so anyways, here we go. As you know, I am making over these lamps. Um, they are a ceramic very heavy and originally if you didn't see the before pictures they were in an earthy tone um and i decided to sponge over first i cleaned um prepped them i gave them one coat of water-based sealer and a matte finish and then i took a sponge sea sponge you know just regular sea sponge and i applied one layer in a sea sponge of Wise Owl One Hour Enamel in carbon. And give me one sec. This is what I use first. I don't know if you can, oops. Wise Owl One Hour Enamel. And it's in the color carbon, which is a, let's see, here it is. It's a beautiful, like, not charcoal, not black. It's an in-between, so it's beautiful color. Um, I let that dry and then I applied Amy Howard's craft patina over the lamps, over the carbon. So after that, I applied Rust-Oleum brand chalk paint in aged farmhouse gray. It's a very soft gray. And I applied that over the crackle and I let that sit for just like a minute. And then I do this really cool technique, which I'm going to show you with the next layer, the next color I'm using. But I use my chip brush. And now normally with Crackle, you can just let it do its magic all on its own once you apply your layer of chalk paint or whatever paint you're using. But I like to add a little more chippiness and texture. So I'm going to show you how I did that with my next layer of color over the soft gray. Okay. Um, so that's where we're at. I already did this side in the color that I'm using. Now the color I'm using for this next layer is actually a combination of the carbon from one, uh, Wise Owl One Hour Enamel and the Rust-Oleum Aged Farmhouse Gray. So I combined the two to come up with a custom color. I didn't want it too dark and I didn't want it too light, but I just wanted the right, the right hue. Let me just stir this up. I don't know. Can you see that? It's a beautiful, beautiful color. Kind of uh, like a weathered, a dark weather. So now let me see. This is the light. Farmhouse gray over the crackle. So now let me just moisten my brush. I keep a little mister handy. So I'm moisten the brush just a little. And when you apply your paint over the crackle, 
it reactivates the crackle. So that's how you get that lovely chippy goodness going on. So I'm gonna take my brush, put some paint on it. And they tell you to tell you to just go in one direction. I am not one to follow the rules. I like creating my own little pattern. And that's the thing when you're trying to create um, an authentic age chippy goodness look. If you think about it, when things that already have that natural patina age, if they don't age and chip in the same pattern or, or sense, it's random. So, and that's what I'm trying to create. Okay, so I got a nice full coverage. Okay, and now, like I said, most people just leave it and let the crackle do its magic. Not me. I like to add a little more texture, a little more depth, because I really want that carbon and the farmhouse light gray and the actual earth tone the lamps originally were to pop. I want them all to come out so it looks like it's been painted, chipped away, painted, chipped away. You know what I mean? Okay, so you're going to take your cheap chip brush with your two fingers like this. We're going to apply a little pressure. And you're going to drag and pull and lift. And what this is doing is creating more texture and it's pulling away some of the layers. I mean, where's my cloth? These also tend to get a little saturated, so you're going to want to try to keep some of it off. With this process, you also wind up going through a lot of brushes. See if you can see, I'm just pulling, dragging. Now, there's another tool I use. And I'll show you that in one minute. Let me just apply a little pressure on this end. I like to take a lint-free cloth, scrap cloth, see? And I dab because I want to pull off in some areas. So I want the lighter. I want the, the earth tones, the carbon. So I'm just going to pounce and dab until I get it to where I really like the finish. Let me get up here with my brush. Apply the pressure. Let's add a little... A little texture in there. Like I said, you're just doing little swiggles, little drag and pull. And let's go back to the cloth, add a little more over here texture. Oops. That is not too bad. And again, I apologize for yesterday's uh, live going a little early. Like I said, this has just been a really emotional, exhausting week. And I'm trying to hold it all together for my family because, you know, I got to take care of my father-in-law and my husband. So I do apologize for going earlier than I said I was going to. I'm sure you can all relate so okay so can you see those layers see you got some of the earth tone the dark and now all in between this chippy goodness you also have the crackle you have the fizzier lines you know what i mean so you have it looking like it's cracking in certain areas and getting ready to do this chippiness and that's the look i'm going for so um, the other thing, let me just set this one aside. The other thing I showed on my live, and like I said, you know, of course, if it could go wrong, it did go wrong. I went earlier, and then internet was being wonky. We're supposed to be getting a storm, so I think I was just rushing before we lost power or lost connect internet um, to get a live in. And then again, I was just so exhausted that I just wanted to do the live, keep the momentum going so I didn't lose confidence, do the live just so I can sit down and finally breathe and relax. 
But this is the final look of what we're going to be going for. So I also showed the gold leafing um, and the waxing, which I'm going to show you. I did this side on the live. So we're going to show you how I achieved that. Let's see. Okay. So after I got the layers of chippiness I wanted and the color and all of that on the base, I went over these highlighted raised details with a product called Bowl. And it's basically just a clay color, a dark clay color um, base that you'll use under your gold leafing. And I get mine, where is it? Again, it's called Bowl, B-O-L-E. I got mine from Amy Howard Products. This was a technique she taught me, and it really does, if you can see, so the look I was going for with my gold leafing, as you can see, I wanted it to look like it was there and started wearing off. So what you see popping underneath is that clay color. So that's what I wanted to make it really look old, worn, and authentic like they would have done back in the 14th, 15th century. Okay, so that's what I did. And I didn't apply it heavy. I went kind of like with a, a very light brushing and applied it there, some up in here, some here, and then across the base. So let's gold leaf. Let's do a little gold leafing. Let's see if I can move him out of the way a little more. I don't want to knock him down because they are ceramic. I'm going to lay him down like this. Set those aside. Oopsie. Hold on, guys. I'm out of camera for a minute. Just grabbing the brush I use for my... Okay. Let me dry my brush. <coughs> And I will show you quickly how I gold leaf. Now I'm using Amy Howard's, where did I put it? Oh, there it is. Um, gilding size. I don't have it in the original container because the original container cracked and I had to quick save my sizing. Now what gilding size and the process I'm using, you don't want to oversaturate your brush because what that does is leave pools and puddling where you're gonna go leaf and it will take forever for it to come to tack. So, I don't know if you can see, I have very light on my brush. And I'm just gonna dry brush this across. Lightly brushing it where I want the gold leaf to go. See, there was a little puddling there. We don't want that. So like I said, just dry brushing it where you want the gold leaf to go, lightly brushing. You don't want puddling or pooling. And you do want to let your, your gold leaf and come to tack. Or your sizing, I'm sorry, your sizing to come to tack. Let me get all these raised areas up here. And I'm not really worried if I get a little on the other areas that I don't have the bowl. And that's because I want it to look like it was all gold leafed. And over the years, it just started wearing away. And another good rule of thumb that I learned when doing gold leafing. Get a little more gilt for the bottom here. I'm also doing this base. Let me make sure I have some in there. So another thing I learned, when you want to test to see if it's ready to add the gold leaf, and I will show you, give me one sec. Um, besides, some people will say, how do you know when it's ready? Well, it will have a shiny look to it. That's one. Oops. That's a little too much. I got to brush that back. We'll have a little shiny 
sheen to it once it's ready. The other way to determine if it's ready, and I didn't know this, but you're going to want to use your, your ring finger. Um, and I'll show you that trick in one second. Let me just get this gilled on. Okay, that should be enough. Excuse me for sniffling. My allergies have been horrible this year. And we're having such weird weather here in New York. I don't know how you guys are doing, but we're having weird weather. Okay. <clears throat> so, basically, you're going to take your ring finger. And you're just going to lightly touch, because you don't want to leave a huge fingerprint either in your, your gilding size. And see if it comes to tack. Um, usually it's 10 to 15 minutes depending on your weather and humidity. I like to just give it a little fanning. And you don't want it too wet because your, your gold leaf will not, excuse me, stick to it. And you don't want to let it dry too much because it won't stick to it. So we're just going to give it a little fan. There we go. Oh, that's still a little. Give it a few more minutes. Okay. So I like to do, and this is Gold Leaf by Amy Howard. Um, so I'm going to place this on. I'm going to pounce it down in, break off, pounce it down in, break a little off. I do not like to waste my gold leafing at all because it's expensive. So I am always careful, mindful, of trying not to waste gold leafing. another chunk to the center pounce that down on my gilding size looks like I missed a little piece right here whoops use that over here and I just use a chip brush to get it pounced down in where I want it And that way, when I see any bare spots, I can place it in. Okay, let's get another one. So get this bottom. Again, we're just going to lay it down, pounce a little, rip. And isn't it fun working with gold leafing? You try not to breathe, cough, sneeze, and you don't want to do any of it. You're like, oh my. Because it's so light and feathery that it will go everywhere. Let me just get another sheet. So I can get in here on the base. Make sure I got full coverage where I put everything. Everywhere I put the gild, I want to make sure I have full coverage. Okay. I also keep a little container when I'm doing gold leaf. Because like I said, I don't want to waste any. So, all right, let's set that gold leaf aside. And, whoops. Now, what I like to do is I like to take, you know, the sheets that separate the gold leaf? I like to use this for burnishing. So, I'm going to lay this down. And I'm just going to rub over my gold leaf to get make sure I have really good adhesion. So I'm going to just lay that down and we're going to rub to burnish it in there. That way I know it's there.
good chunk here. Let's get some in here. Okay. Let's get down here and burnish. That way, too, once I brush away, I can see if there's any spots I need to touch up. to get down in there. Looks like I might have to go in with a little touch up in here. We'll see. Okay. So. I said do a little more burnishing here where I had to fix in. Next up, because I don't like to waste, I told you guys that I'm just going to lightly brush this to get all this loose off. And then I can see where I might need to fill in. It looks like I missed a few spots. Covered in gold leaf. I try to go very gentle because, like I said, I want to brush this up and put it right in my little cup so I have all these beautiful chips left over to use for another project. I don't like to. I don't like to waste. Plus, like I said, I have a couple spots I just want to fill in so I can use some of these chunks. Okay, so let me get my size again. There's a few pieces. A few sections, I just want a little more in there. Once I'm done with this part, we'll, I'll be able to show you the wax. And like, let's say, I want a little more right in here. Maybe some right up there. This little curly cue. And a little more in there. Here, Let's see, and you know you do have to seal your your gold leafing, um, because you want it to last. You didn't do all this hard work for nothing, right? And then a little more on that ledge. Let's see that in there. Should do it. <clears throat> Let that little dab come to tack. <coughs> Excuse me. And like I said, I had to turn away to cough because I don't want this to go everywhere. So let's say, no, oopsie, don't fall away. I want this right in there. Let that sit. Big chunks we got sitting here. Okay. 
I got some nice big chunks in here. Down in there. Let's see. Stick to my finger. I'm just using my chip brush to pound it down in a little bit. Same over here. Get this pounced in where I want it. Let's just get this shelf down here, this little ledge. Mix that in there and then pounce it in so I can burnish it. And like I said, it's okay if there's some areas you want that bowl to show up a little bit because you want it to look like it's worn away. So I'm going to again take my little tissue paper, rub to burnish the gold leafing on. some of this gold leaf real quick because like I said I don't like to waste gold leaf is pretty expensive everything's getting expensive these days though right okay let me just swoop this up in my cup guys real quick like I said, I don't like to waste. And I know you're saying, Patty, you said that three times. No. Sorry. Just fill in the void with a little conversation. Okay. Okay, so I got my gold leaf on. Now, I am going to take a very fine steel wool. And I'm going to go over this just to get all the other loose off. Plus it helps burnish it a little bit more so you get that nice smooth finish. Okay, next up is set these aside. I need my wax and brushes. Let me grab where did I put those? Oh, there they are. Sorry. Again for my waxing. I'm grab my cardboard. This is there. The magic's going to happen. So where all those layers you're going to get to see really pop through. Get some of this 
school leaf and off of here. Okay. So I my my wax brushes are a hot mess. They gotta be deep cleaned. They really do. Um, the wax I really like to use, especially when I'm creating an old world finish, excuse me, is Amy Howard's Light and Dark Antique and Wax. And I just can't say enough about these waxes. I really love them. So you're going to load your brush. And you have a little piece of cardboard off to the side. Unload it because you don't want it too saturated. And then with your brush, load it with its wax. You're just going to... Now, <clears throat> if you see how my hand's going, I don't say go up and down or this way. Just get your brush going, your wrist flicking. I call it swish and flick. Like from Harry Potter. And you want to get full coverage, but you don't want to saturate it. You don't want it too sticky, greasy. And again, good rule of thumb to check how, how much coverage you got on your lamp or piece you're working on. I'm working on lamp, so... Take your ring finger, again, just your ring finger. And we're gonna, okay, it's nice up here. It looks like it needs a little more in the middle area. Maybe a little at the bottom. And like I said, I just keep moving my wrist in all directions so I get full coverage but not too too greasy or slick. I actually love the smell of this wax too. And I don't know if you can see but this is just the light antique and wax. And you can start to see all those fissures and crackles and chippiness really start to pop through. So I'm going to take my ring finger. Oh, that's nice. And you're going to let it sit for just a minute and let it come to tack. <clears throat> a little more tack. Let me put this aside. Grab my next steps. Put this paint aside so I don't tip that over. More gold leafing. I'll be finding this for a week around my office. Okay. And again, the dark, uh, the first light wax I use is Amy Howard's Light Antique and Wax. Where did I just put it? Oh, there it is. It comes in a little tin like this. Oh, it's upside down. No, it's not upside down. Amy Howard's Light Antique and Wax. Okay. This next up. This is just a wide um, chip brush. I use this just in the buffing. And let me just I used it last night, so let me give it a little. And it's dry. It has no wax on it. Um, like I said, my brushes are brood, I'm brutal on them, so this looks horrible. I'm going to take this now to help distribute, spread, and kind of do a little buffing with the light wax. And again, it's just flick and swish with the wrist. And this is to help make sure I have full coverage and it's not too thick. And it's also part of my buffing process. You do not have to do this process. It's just me. It's what I prefer. And now these waxes will serve as a sealer for these lamps. Okay. Going to take, again, fine grit steel wool pad. And we are just going to buff now. Because I don't want this too shiny. Right? I want it to look aged and worn like it's been there for years. So that's where the next step is going to come in.
And as you're buffing, like you don't have to do my next step, but as you're buffing, you actually start seeing a natural sheen happen. And it's, oh, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's a natural sheen. It's not glossy or satin. It's just natural. All right, now we're ready for the dark wax. This is my favorite part. Because the dark wax, which is also by Amy Howard at home, and it's dark antique and wax. Look at this. It comes in a little tin, a puck. And I don't know what it is, but this wax to me is just, compare, I've used a lot of waxes, but I really like this wax. Again, you're going to load your brush and offload it. And then in the same, you're going to start from the outside corners. And right now you're probably saying, oh my God, Patty, what are you doing? Trust me. I want to get it into all these yummy goodnesses. The first time I did this, I remember thinking, oh my God, I ruined the piece. It's got too much wax. What am I going to do? It's all right. You'll see. Get a little more on my brush. I know you're thinking it looks grungy, but it won't. Just gotta trust the process. Okay. Set that aside. Let it just sit for a minute. We're not panicking. All right, remember that chip brush I used just to uh, do a little buffing first before I actually start the buffing. Well, here we come. All right, you ready? So here we go. Again, flick and swish. See that? I almost smacked myself right in the face. Now I'm going to test with my ring finger. Perfect. Where's my steel wool? Steel wool again. Buff. Buff. Just a little because we got one more step. Okay. So we got some buffing done. It's got a nice tack. Not too wet, not too slimy and greasy. And we're gonna do our last step. And that is, you know what the antique or old gold frames, those big ones and down in the corners and all the intricate details, you see this gray dustiness and you're thinking, oh, somebody couldn't get in there to dust. No, you want that. We're going to use some dust of ages to create that look in all the nooks and crannies on this lamp. And this is by Amy Howard as well. <clears throat> if you notice, I mix a lot of products. We use Wise Out. We use Rust-Oleum. We use Amy Howard. My top coat sealer is, uh, I'll get that in a minute. Now I'm just brushing this dust of ages all over this lamp. We're going to get into every little nook and cranny, and that's why the wax is still a little tack. We're going to get it all over. And when you first see this process, you're thinking, I just made this a complete mess. Now, what did I do? 
again, it's one of those trust the process. Just trust it. Because it will be wonderful. It will. It will be fabulous. Before you know it, you'll have an old world, old world, chippy, yummy goodness feel. All right. Cut this all down. All its nooks and crannies. Set that aside. And again, that's Amy Howard. Dust of Ages. Okay. That same brush again. This brush gets abused. All right. We're just going to, again, brush down all that dust. Make sure it's getting in all its nooks and crannies. And then swish and flick. All random directions. Keep that wrist moving. You get a little workout. And it gets in all those little nooks and crannies. And then, ready? Back to steel wool again. And you're gonna buff. This arm is so strong because it's I'm predominantly right-handed, so it's the hand I always buff with. Okay, so after that, I like to take whew, just the shoe shine brush. Excuse me, buffing brush. Buffing brush. Um, my husband used to use these for his, his boots and shoes for, for work. So, and you're going to go again. I like to do this just a, a little extra buffing. And just like you would buff shoes. Again, you do not have to do this. And I got this brush um, right on, I think, Amazon. It was like four or five bucks. It wasn't expensive at all. I do know it helps when you're doing furniture. And lastly, straight up regular kids chalkboard eraser. Got it at the dollar store. You can use a soft cloth for this part. You can use this. And there you have it. Boom. Isn't that beautiful? Love this finish. And look at, did you just see that little sheen? Oh, it's fabulous. So there you have it, guys. That is the recap. I said I will do uh, like a reel video, one of those little reels, and it will have the step-by-steps, and it will also have a picture of all the products I use. Um, now I just got to find shades for them. So there you have it. Thanks for watching the recap, and um, hopefully next Friday's live will go a lot easier and smoother, and I'll stick to the time that I said I was going to. Have a great day. Happy Saturday. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.